Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers, if you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome back to another episode of Biters, the podcast about the Walking Dead on AMC and all things zombie. I'm one of your hosts, Jeff Marsick, and with me as always on the other side of my Skype uh, connection is... Kirk Manley. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Before we get going about uh, this week's episode uh, and and the particulars, we'll... uh, uh, what should we do first? Should we do do numbers first, or should we let's do let's do the letter we had for last week's episode uh, crossed or uh, okay. consumed? Yeah, we had a lot of um, a lot of letters, a lot of uh, posts uh, on the Facebook page this week. Um, so awesome! Really appreciate that. Hope people keep that up. That's uh, it. Just makes the show a lot more interesting for us. Is hopefully also for you guys. You know, to hear everybody's opinions. I, I'm just, as I posted, I think once I, I look forward to that almost more than I do the episode <laughs> at this point. Well, yeah, of course you do because uh, it seems like everybody agrees with you. There's always posts. There's just like <laughs> that should tell you something, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> are you paying attention <laughs> y'all aren't watching the same show i'm watching um, <laughs> it's always depressing someone gets i want somebody to go in there and go jeff you are spot on kirk was was way off the mark it hasn't happened you, yet you can't believe how much it's costing me to pay all those people off <laughs> <laughs> all my cousins and aunts and uncles are like <laughs> uh yeah we've got a poll up i, I put a, a poll up on the uh the on Facebook, uh, on one of the posts to see who you think is, is going to die. Uh, before we started this podcast, there were just three votes up. There was two for Beth and one for Carol. So it's neck and neck. Um, <laughs> three votes in. Uh, anyway, bef- uh, first thing, I want to uh, give a shout out to... Uh, Wait a minute, before, before you move on, just since, since you brought it up, that... <laughs> I am so screwed up now in my head. I posted just posted this a few minutes ago on Facebook. Every, there's been so many, like, I mean, I started off, I was just totally convinced that, that Carol, this was Carol's season to die, right? This is her, yep. this is her moment in the sun. Then, you know, you made, presented some arguments and some, some of the, the listeners presented arguments, watching stuff online. I'm like, okay, could be either Carol or Beth, right? Could be either of those. Now, all these other theories are coming out, and like like um, Laura wrote in, a our, our regular writer in Laura, um, she wrote in, and I'm not going to read her, but she had an interesting, I just wanted to read her thing, because she's now got me completely going off that now like anybody is free game. But uh, if, if I could, I'm just going to throw this in here. She, it's, um, she's, she's talking about how the... the um, she thinks it's all a big deliberate uh, ref, um, deflection. All this concern about Carol and Beth and the way they're writing it so that everybody thinks it's that what's going on and all the stuff that's going on in Atlanta and that there's going to be like some sort of a backdoor move by the writers that's going to completely catch us off guard. Like maybe the, the, the real downer is going to happen at the church. Oh. Gabriel's out there on the lamb and... and Judith. Um, yes. Judith. Judith. 
I was like, damn you, Laura. <laughs> well, I, well, that's the thing is that it's I, a great theory. It's a great theory. Uh, uh, well, and, and the thing is, is that I, I, I know I made the, the post uh, might've been in response to Laura, uh, posting about Coda when we were helping you with your, uh, you know, with your words, uh, <laughs> and definitions, which I appreciate. <laughs> um, it, it seemed to, at the time it made sense. Oh, okay, yeah, it's going to be Beth Swan song, and they're going to make it just right. you know tearjerker and blah, blah blah. But then as the weeks go on, I'm like, no, that's just too easy. It's like too everybody's obvious. expecting it. If exactly. Beth dies, we, we're all expecting it. If Carol dies, we're all expecting it. It's right. got to be left field. This is why, like, I, I used to think Sasha, but we just you know Sasha, she gets her head hit this episode. It's plus, going back plus to the well. Just plus, we just lost Bob. I yeah, mean, I think it would, just... from a writing point of view, I can't imagine that they would take Sasha now too. Well, it's funny because yeah. when I did the poll, when I created this poll for the Facebook page, the uh, you know it was who do you th- vote for who you think is is going to die, and I put Beth, Carol, Sasha, Tara, and I'm looking, I was like, oh look, all women, <laughs> like. So that's why I yeah, threw but a Judith is a girl too. Well, yeah, but no. that but we just lost Bob of two or three episodes, so they're going back and forth, <laughs> gender swapping genders back and forth. <laughs> But no, I just, uh, it, if you think about a couple of other things too, that, that would lead, lend some credence to that, that theory. In the comic, Judith's death was just horrible. completely, well, it was, one of us is horrible, but it was also completely out of left field. Right. Totally unexpected. And, you know, this would be that level of unexpectedness. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, so in that sense, they might have been looking for an opportunity to, to do that, but didn't want to do it at the prison because everybody was waiting for that and looking for that. You know what I mean? Now they're not looking for it as much. Two, Rick being away. How heart wrenching is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So the other thing that, that lends some credence to is if you, cause they're, I think they're really sneaky about the PR and the stuff they put out. But have you seen this article that's been going around about Daryl? Um, I mean, about Norman Reedus and how he's, he was interviewed by somebody and he was saying how he cried for an hour after I did watching not see that. No. Yeah. He said he cried for an hour after what? And I think it's, I didn't read the article because I didn't want to get spoiled, but he says the way it was worded in the, in the headline was that he cried for an hour after seeing the finale. So of course everybody's like, well Beth. then that that confirms it. It's definitely Beth or definitely Carol. But wait a minute. Yeah. First of all, after seeing the finale, right. So then maybe what happened? He wasn't there when it, in the shooting of it. You know what I mean? And then secondly, the only thing that would rip his heart out even more would be Judith. I mean that's the little ass kicker. I mean, yeah. he lo- you know what I mean? He's he's loved that baby since the beginning. That would be heart wrenching for him. Oh, I, I I like that theory. I yeah, like so that theory. Pro- props to Lara and uh, hats off and and uh, and and curse all you guys with all these great theories because now I don't know <laughs> I don't know who's gonna die, which that, is actually gonna great makes the show better. That Lara, she's a she's a she's a sharp cookie. She she, she should is. have her own podcast. <laughs> um, just not Walking Dead because I don't think we can handle the competition. No, <laughs> we, can't, we can't afford to lose our two or three uh, listeners. <laughs> Well, I love how people are writing in and they're they're, they're numbering themselves. Like, I know. <laughs> Abby, listener number five. <laughs> Abby Q writes in. He goes, uh, "Listener number two here." That's, That's awesome. right. That's awesome. Um, all right. So, just about last week's, uh, we had this uh, email from uh, her name is I'll just call her Susan. Uh, she she knows who she is. Um, I, I just can't believe that's her last name. Um. Anyway, she says, hi, Biters, Germany calling again. Just finished your Consume podcast, and I totally agree with you. This episode has been truly awesome. More so, I very much enjoyed your recap and analysis. I was amazed what you were able to uncover. Uh, No wonder you had 20-odd pages of notes on the show. (laughs) Well, a lot of that, Susan, is also because uh, Kirk's got... You know, early onset Alzheimer's, and so <laughs> I keep writing the same sentence <laughs> over and over and over. <laughs> he thinks they're notes, basically but they're more like sentences. the no- they're, yeah, they're more like the notebooks from Seven. You know, just a bunch of. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why am I laughing? <laughs> I don't know. You'll forget this conversation in 10 minutes anyway. Uh, If this becomes a habit, you'll probably end up teaching college. Just joking. Please stay with your art and the podcast. Uh, I am definitely not ever going to be teaching college. Well, I shouldn't say ever, but uh, chances are very, very unlikely. 
Uh, as many other viewers, I love the episode, particularly because of the return of Team Awesome, Carol and Daryl, finally. It was just fantastic watching the two of them work their way towards the hospital. Hardly any, conversa hardly any conversation necessary, and if, then mainly reassurances that they were there for each other. I have never been one of the Daryl Carol shippers. I am really glad that the show writers are not forcing this issue. Team Carol Daryl would not be the same if there was romance involved. Plus, there's a certain age difference that would make it look awkward. FYI, I do not really see them in a relationship similar to what I do not really see them in a relationship similar to what a mother would have to a son, but but more as siblings, i.e., on equal grounds. And I think I think we agree with you. Yeah, and I I think that's a good point that she brought up that that lots of people don't is that for some reason and I don't know why people often bring up that the Beth the con that the issue that they have with the Beth Daryl connection is the age difference, but I see the same age difference between Carol and Daryl. It's yeah. just the opposite way, and you know, not that I'm any more uncomfortable with either, but they both make me feel like they just don't fit. Right. But anyway, go ahead. Also, I found post-apocalyptic. Atlanta terribly eerie, very well done. The slow pace underlined the hopelessness, and I think it was for the benefit of the audience to truly experience this feeling whenever Carol or Daryl pause to look out of window. The only flaws I noticed were, of course, A, the van, no need to go into detail here, you've said it all, and B, I cannot grasp why the hospital cops did not notice that they were being followed, especially when, in downtown Atlanta, a moaning zombie started banging Carol's side of the car in clear sight of the police vehicle. Yeah. I don't know if we talked about that, but that was actually a really good point. Yeah, um, I agree. That, I totally agree. I mean, the fact that he even stops and looks, I yeah. mean, you know, yeah, that, so that's, at this point in, everybody knows exactly how the biters work, you know, what they respond to, what they don't respond to. And yeah, they're not going to be paying attention to a car unless there's something living yeah. in it. So she said, anyway, second best episode of the season. Uh, can't wait to see what will happen next. Hope you guys will expand your faithful biters fandom. Next con continent to conquer would be Australia, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. I haven't heard anybody weigh in from Australia, so uh, no. Well, I want to hear from Australia. I want to hear from Japan. Yes, or, you know, anywhere in the Asian continent, that would be awesome, man. Yeah. So if you're out there, give us a shout out. We want to hear it. All the best to you until next week. So that was Susan from from Germany. Thank you very much. Thanks, Susan. And Susan, uh, I keep meaning to get to Germany because my family is from a little village called Grotzingen, actually. So <laughs> she'll know where it is. Um, we also heard from uh, uh, Dawn, who was uh, uh, new to the show. She said she found us uh, via a shout out from Jason and Karen, um, and she has to say she's loving us. So that's awesome. Uh, we're glad to have you, Dawn, join the ranks of the biters. And uh, she says thanks for your insights and entertainment. Um, we also heard from Kurt Jansen, who has the coolest uh, email address. I won't give the whole address, but the the front name is. Uh, Chewbacca doll. Oh, right. <laughs> that was really cool, Kurt. Um, he says, I just wanted to drop you a line, letting you know you had a new listener here. So that brings you now to five, right? <laughs> 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 Kidding. I'm actually listening to you guys now, and you're joking about your fan base. Enjoying the show. Keeping, uh, keep up the great work. I'm an artist as well. And enjoy hearing like-minded people with uh, you being comic creators. Uh, I plan on writing in with opinions and comments. Glad to hear it, Kurt. We want to see it. And excited to be a part of the listener family. By the way, Kirk's laugh is infectious and makes me laugh out loud, which gets uh, some strange looks on the train. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Kurt will uh, <laughs> maybe a good dose of uh, antibiotic might cure that infection. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I sometimes have uh, that effect on people, I guess. Thank you. Uh, take care. Kurt. Now, the interesting thing about Kurt is um, uh, he listed, he sent us where he's from, and uh, it's interesting. I went to college in the same town. <laughs> oh, wow. So, Kurt, if you're listening, way to go, dude. Uh, and then uh, you want to talk about, uh, oh, no, I, I've got it here as my note. Laura, uh, who we also mentioned, uh, did a very, very generous thing this week. And oh, yeah. um, she don't, went over to the Southgate website and uh, Southgate Media, which is our kind of our mother, um, mother organization ship. that we, yeah, that we uh, belong to. And um, she donated to the Biters uh, site, or I guess you can do it over at there. You can pick, I don't know if you, I guess you go through the, the link to our section of the Southgate Media, and then you can donate on that page so that they know it's, you know, you're, you know, you think one of us would have gone to our actually, you know, our, our sponsors <laughs> page and 
Uh, yeah, you would think that, um, <laughs> but you would be wrong. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, we, we, we haven't, uh, asked people to donate uh, much before or at all before, but it, it is a, it is very helpful. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, costs involved in bandwidth and, uh, RS feeds and things like that to keep this show going. Um, so, uh, any, anything that you can do to help, uh, would be great. Well, uh, well, she, she did it because her note <laughs> she was had funny. an ulterior motive. <laughs> yeah. Was, so last week I had technical difficulties with this new, uh, operating system from Apple and it, they changed GarageBand and, oh man, it, it's just been a nightmare. So, and then we, so it was funny cause we were just getting all kinds of, uh, where's Biters? I, I, I went to get Biters and Biters wasn't on, on iTunes this morning. Like people were getting rabid. Um, and, uh, so we had recorded Tuesday, I think, and normally it goes up on Wednesday, but our producer who edits, he was sick and, uh, things took some time. So I don't think we got up until Friday, maybe. Yeah, I think it was Friday. I think it was late Friday. And yeah, so, and then that, per- uh, kind of caused Laura to go over and she donated just to make sure that we got moved to the top of the editing pile. So, and, and, and we have been, Laura, it worked. We have been assured by Rob that we are now at the top of the queue for at least the next two weeks. So, uh, <laughs> that'll get us this episode up and, uh, the finale up real quick. So we appreciate that help, Laura. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. How about some numbers on, uh, I'm crossed. Okay, so this week, well, Sunday Night Football, the uh, the Cowboys playing the Giants uh, beat the Walking Dead. Uh, it was uh, 9 million people watched uh, in the demographic, 9 million in the 18 to 49 demo uh, watched football versus 8.86 million. But I'm going to throw an asterisk on this. Uh, because the American Music Awards. I was around. just going to say AMAs, which is the same crowd age range. So, and the age AMAs range. are based <laughs> same age crouch? age range with a G. Age range. <laughs> <laughs> They're uh, all grazing in the range. Hooked on fire. Yeah, I agree. I think. Friend, I think. I think that's good. I think you're right. I think that's exactly yeah, what happened. Yeah, the, the AMAs are kind of like uh, you know, if this was a presidential election, they're like the independents. You know, no chance of winning, but just stealing votes. <laughs> so. That's what happened here. Uh, total viewers, Sunday Night Football had 19.77 million, and The Walking Dead had 13.3. But, so, there's the AMAs that stole some, probably stole some What's eyes. the difference? What's the difference between the total numbers and the first numbers that you just, you gave? Uh, total is, uh, is all viewers, and the... the oh, okay. Uh, and you're talking about the, just in the 18th? In the demo, yeah. In the demo, okay. So, total viewers, though, is... 13, 13 you said? a little over 13 yeah so that's and that was before i'm just trying to keep track of as we go through the the, we, the we went something like 13 6 and then last week was 14 uh, 1 and then we right, came down to 13 down. 3 um so uh you know we're going to see and those numbers keep getting revised up because now we're date we're plus two you know uh, plus, with the advent of DVR, they've changed the metrics. Now there's like plus three, plus five, and basically plus seven. All those numbers are going to get revised up, right? Um, because people delay their watching. But so the recording, the recording of their watch only takes place when they view the DVR. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's cool. And then uh, so we'll have. Uh, I know, it, it, for all intents and purposes, I mean, it was it was a pretty good game. Uh, you know, Cowboys Giants. It was it was tight till the till the end of the game. So, who won? Uh, uh, Cowboys by three. Uh, <laughs> even though, even though, probably. Ooh. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> Just a little little side note here. Probably the, arguably, if not one, if not the, then one of the greatest catches ever made in. Oh in yes, football. I saw that. Yeah, it wasn't that- even a one handed grab. It was a three finger grab. And he was f- f- almost completely in the air backwards. Oh, uh, it was Beckham, that was Beckham Jr. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Uh, but this following week coming up are are some kind of low rent games. Relatively, they're not as not as uh, enticing as last week. So, and being the mid season finale, and everybody wants and, to see and what's going to no happen. No AMAs. No AMAs. So yeah, it should be good. It should be a big, big should numbers. be huge. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, uh, as I've been doing um, in previous this this season, um, doing the tweets there, the live tweets. Hope everybody's been joining in. Don't forget um, at J Marzik uh, is uh, for Jeff. At Batman KM is for me, and at Biters Podcast. 
um, any of those, uh, we want to hear you uh, live tweet with us. That would be a lot of fun. It sometimes gets pretty funny. Uh, let's see. This week we had the highlights were uh, at Celtic, uh, at Celtic. So, I bet Tara is going to fist pump that fish. <laughs> it just sounds wrong. <laughs> it does sound wrong, <laughs> but it was funny. Hey, hats off to her. She went the whole episode without a fist bump. Yeah. Um, at Zad F underscore org. Did Glenn really just leave Maggie alone with Rage Ham? I mean Abraham. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, at UK underscore MJ, Rick gives dancing on the edge a whole new meaning. Uh, at TWD Junkie, Rick Grimes can go zero to 100 real quick. <laughs> that was true, man. When he's got that cop in his sights. Yep. Oh, man. Uh, let's see, at Rick and Things, no one tries to kill my pookie. <laughs> that was, for, that was uh, towards Rick. Uh, at Dr. Eugene, WD. If I were there, all the cops would be captured. I have endless amounts of logistical <laughs> strategies. <laughs> uh, let's see. At Nerd Queen 84, uh, Norman Reedus redefining the meaning of headbutt. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was classic. Can't wait to talk about that. And the tweet of the night uh, was uh, at News of the Dead. Carol, it's me, Beth. Daryl's mine, bitch. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Awesome! All right. So you know you my you know my biggest my biggest fear of that scene when she was in there with Carol is that she was gonna start singing. I was just <laughs> please your God don't sing. Please your God don't I sing. Thought, I was waiting. I thought I was afraid she was gonna put a pillow over her face. <laughs> <laughs> Say Daryl's mine. Daryl's mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what did you give it for uh, rating? All right, so I gotta go. Uh, I liked it a little bit better than uh, than last week, um, and I'll I'll go into I'll go into the why. So I gotta go. It wasn't great, but I'm gonna go probably inch inch up a little bit higher than last week. So I'll go like three point seven five. Okay. Any any overall statements or just the just that you liked it better? Well, uh, you know, it's it, I think that it's it was weird because it, it's it's an episode where where. Nothing really happened, and it was and it was clearly the calm before the storm. We're just moving the pieces around the right. board, getting ready for the end game. So I knew that was there, but there was just something about. Um, I think I, I think what it was was just the the openness of it of being we're here at the church and this is going on. Then we go over with this these guys over here, and then we go over here. I do think that Glenn and and uh, Glenn and Tara and Rosita going off fishing added absolutely nothing to the show, but still it was just it was <laughs> just was nice to I don't know, open up and it just felt less claustrophobic, you know, kind of thing. Even though I really liked last last week's episode and like I said, that it felt like a Western to me last week and I love seeing Daryl right. and Carol together. But I, I, you know, I, I liked it just a, a little bit more. I think just because of we got to see a little bit more. And and it, for the past couple episodes, that's been a, a frequent complaint online of people saying, "Oh, we're just following Team Abraham," or "We're just following." You know, yeah. kind of. I think some some people don't like to get this the 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 narrow focused episodes you know about characters you know particular characters so I, there were people who complained about that in the back half of last season as well and it was just um, wild seeing and we'll talk about some of them in this in this episode but it was it was great to see the uh you know when you get when you when you focus in on characters you kind of get spend an hour with just a couple characters and you get used to those personalities. Right. And then, you know, last week, Carol and Daryl, well, they're just opposite sides of the same coin. And, you know, they're kind of the same this week. We just had a disparity of characters. You had, you had Rick and you had Tyrese and you had, you know, you just had all this stuff going on. So it was, right. it was kind of like a smorgasbord of, of yeah. you know, characters and things to watch. So I think that's why I enjoyed it a little bit more. Gotcha. I, uh, I enjoyed it a little less than last week's episode. So I'm, I'm going with a 3.25 headshots. Um, but you know, it was a solid episode. I agree. And, um, overall very entertaining. And it had some really, a couple of few really strong tense spots that were great. Um, mostly though, I, I kind of agree with you. I felt like it was a setup episode for the finale, um, yeah. which, you know, isn't a bad thing, you know? Um, but, uh, but just in terms of comparison to other episodes, it, it kind of then kind of rates a little lower for me. Um, but, you know, there really has been no horrible episodes this season. There just, there hasn't been any 
bad episode. So, you know, the worst I can say is that I, I've liked some more than others. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, which is, you know, always going to be the case. Yeah, it's true. There haven't been those episodes where you're just like, oh. Oh, God. You I just keep coming back to those two episodes about the governor. Yeah. And it was just, They're I started infamous. to worry that this was, you know, oh my God, this was the slow burn crash of the, the whole series. But um, they got back on track. All right. So uh, I'm starting to worry, though, that, that getting to DC might slow things down too much now. <laughs> well, I don't know. If they keep on this pace, they'll they'll be in DC, you know, the first episode after the mid-season finale, and they'll be on their way to Baltimore, you know, the No, but episode. when they get to DC, if they follow, I mean, of course, it could be completely different, but if they follow the book, you know, it kind of slows down for yeah. a while, you know. Um, what do you make of the title? Crossed. All right, so I've been, you know, damn you, a couple weeks ago, saying we should figure out what these titles mean. I, there's so many things that this that that this could mean, um, and uh, the the only way I saw it was, um, I I saw it as a crossroads of how basically the 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 hospital is kind of that that junction point. But yet we saw the the disparate storylines kind of radiating out from you know from there, right? I don't know, that's what I took from it. I, I yeah, I don't know. This one's got me a little befuddled too. I mean, there was there was you know um, references. The only physical reference that I can remember is is the the cross on the zombie that Gabriel can't bring himself to kill because he sees the the cross on the right. necklace, um, but. I agree. I think there was some double crossing going on. Obviously, um, uh, well, you had Bob, you had the Lawson. Bob Lampston, yeah. the Lampston character, Maximilia Hernandez. You said Maximiliano Hernandez. Maximiliano Hernandez. Um, <clears throat> Ooh, if you ever get to a convention and you get a chance to oh, meet, he's a great guy. We saw met him at the Connecticut uh, 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 comic book convention. Comic yeah, and. Uh, great guy he was i i loved him i first noticed him in the in the americans he was a character on there he was great and then he's more famous as jasper sitwell agent jasper sitwell in uh captain america movie uh, avengers yep. i believe and then captain america and then uh on agents of shield right but, no, he was he's, he's really he's a really cool guy but um i kind of see his you know he did his double crossing um so but then you also had you also had uh uh, the officer uh, Lawson, uh, right? The girl, the she woman. She double. She's basically double crossing her people, right? Um, and then it seemed like you know Abraham. To your other point, was definitely at a crossroads. Yes. And I think Gabriel is at a crossroads. Yes. You know they got to either shit or get off the pot. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like they got to choose what they're gonna do. Are they gonna live? Are they gonna die? Are they gonna fight? Are they gonna run? Are they gonna do nothing? You know, but they're just kind of right now stuck in neutral in this episode and and uh, lost really. And and uh, so that that also kind of uh, I think uh, was part of that. But you other know, than that, I maybe if the listeners have some other suggestions or ideas, we'd love to hear them. Um, yeah, I kind of went around the internet, took the pulse of the internet, and they seem to be all over the place, too. No one's really saying, coming up with something that I'm t completely buying. You know, uh, uh, Seth Gilliam, his character, uh, Gabriel, is, uh, uh, he's getting a lot of heat uh, for just kind of being squirrely and just being, you know, acting like the way he is. I actually kind of like it. I actually think it's, I actually think there's a, a, a realism there, especially since you've got a guy... <sighs> Too often you have characters get into a situation, whatever it is, and within an episode or two they pick a side. They're either going to be, yeah, you know, bloodthirsty and and all out vengeful, or they're going to be Tyrese and and you know, kind of puppy dogish. Um, I like the fact that he's here. You got this this priest, pa the priest pastor who's been in this church for how long has he been there? A long time, almost right? yeah, almost about a year and a half. Dude, you don't just come right like this is an abomination. That's hell on earth outside that you've been preaching about and blah right. blah, and and you've done some you know you did a sketchy thing by keeping them out and all that. I, I, you're not just gonna turn around and just go, "Yep, I believe you guys, and I'm following you." You're gonna be oh, absolutely, early. And I and not I only that, really but like but that. he didn't see or experience any of what happened with the termites, right? So he had no reference point other than what these this group was telling him 
And I don't think they ever went into the great detail about what happened, just that they were horrible people and did horrible things. But then, so he doesn't have anything, the real reference point to put that slaughter that they did in his church of those guys in, in any context. So as far as he's concerned, these people are that he's with are as horrific and as scary and as off the wall as as the termites were to them. You know what I mean? So that's actually a good point too. These are people who, while they did save him on, you know, when he was on right. the rock, uh, they also then just kind of barged into the church. We're like, all right, we're going to take over. We're going to camp yeah. out here, and uh, yeah. oh, by the way, we're going to get pissed off at these people and hack them up right here on your floor. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, and, now, and now we're going to tear your church apart and use it to more fortify so we can protect our kids that we're leaving behind. Yeah. I know. It's like, you know, you have to kind of, if you look at it from his point of view, it's pretty damn, you know, it's pretty damn scary, you know. Yeah, so I really, um, I actually really, I like that. I like. And that I agree character. that I think he's doing a particularly good job with it because he he's he's making us wonder about him. There's something not right. He, and... And but yet I don't get this feeling, you know, compared to to the, the actor who played Bob, and I, I thought Bob was a fantastic character, and I, I I'm sorry to have lost him, but when he first started out, it was real. Don't you remember we were like, this guy, something's not right with this guy. He's going to become the the means of a huge bad thing happening, and you know, is the drinking, and is he is he working with the governor? Yep. Remember, we yep. thought, and and I don't get that vibe from Gabriel because I think the acting is so much it's it's tighter, you know. Yeah. I get from Gabriel. I mean, um, so I agree. I, I'm going to throw in one other thing too that was interesting. Um, coming back to Lara's uh, suggestion of of perhaps Judith is is uh, in the bullet in the target zone here uh, for the finale. She she elaborated a little bit more that you know she part of her theory on that is because she doesn't she doesn't like um, she's not liking Gabriel she's not comfortable with him and uh, I want to go back to her thing um, I'm very suspicious of Father Gabriel Lara writes and I don't think he ran out of the church without a plan I think he's going somewhere or to someone it really feels like he has some plan up his sleeve. Um, now I don't know about that. I don't. I didn't get the feeling. To me, it looked like he was just running. But there's a clip, I guess. And again, I don't know. You know, if you're into, if you're worried about spoilers, you you may not want to to hear this part. Uh, but I, it's not a real spoiler. But it was in the preview, I guess, um, right. the preview that they showed for the for next week. He ends up at some point. There's a flash of him or a little section of him at the um, school yeah. playground or whatever where the termites were. Well, do you remember what was inside that school? Yeah. That thing was packed yeah. with zombies. I mean, there was a horde inside there. If he goes there and for somehow, for some reason, stumbles and opens up the door or panics or whatever and lets that flood out and then goes running back to the church to try and get safety, Judith. he's going to bring that horde right down on top of that church. Judith. And after they did all that re in reinforcing of the church, it's kind of like makes you think maybe... <laughs> Maybe something's gonna happen there, but uh, yeah. so yeah. But anyway, that's Gabriel. I agree. He's, I think he's doing a great job. All right. So, what were your goods for the episode? Ah, uh, my goods. Let's see. Um, I got a lot of little little ones. Uh, I thought it was really nice to see Maggie doing more than just standing around. Um, I loved how she put Abraham in his place, you know, sit down or I'll put you down. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, and then later, get over yourself. You're not the only one that lost something today. And, uh, you know, I thought that was really good. I thought she, plus, you know, she was just really taking care of, of, um, the situation, you know, I mean, she was really protecting people and looking out for Eugene while he was you know, nursing him back and keeping an eye on Abraham. She was just actively, you know, taking charge. I thought that was great. Um, I thought for the first time I really liked Tara in this episode. It's the first episode I really kind of actually liked her as a character. I thought she was funny. I thought she was helpful. There was no fist bumping. <laughs> so um, I, I, I thought that was that was good. Um, great to get some more background uh, and character development on Rosita. Um, uh, you know, and I thought uh, Glenn is uh, no dumb. He quickly sees her value and and locks her into Team Rick. I thought that was pretty. I thought that when they were doing the fishing, and he's like, "So, like, are you on board? No matter what goes right. on here, you know, because who knows right. what's going to happen with Crazy Man over there, the Crazy Redhead." Um, so that was cool. 
Um, more great survival tidbits. Yeah, Don. that was cool. Um, you know, the fishing with the makeshift net, was, which was cool. The water filter, which I thought was interesting that they made sure to point out was knowledge that she got from Eugene. Um, and I think they're trying to start to establish right now, you know, why Eugene has value and right. should stay in the group, even though he's done this horrible thing of, of lying to them all. Um, you know, I, I tweeted, I tweeted, does it, does it make me weird that I would drink anything that was filtered through anything that Rosita had worn? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I see think that, that, see <laughs> Christian Serratos on uh, Talking I know. Dead? She is so, she so is good. Beautiful. She's so pretty. Um, and let's see, I take Sinequa it the yo-yo. Green too. She's, she's pretty, she's eight months pregnant. She's you know what's hilarious too. though? Uh, her, the, uh, the green, um, um, who's the girl that plays Rosita? Christian, Stratus. Christian, Christian, right? Um, and Maggie, the actress that plays Maggie. Mm-hmm. Cohen. When I've, yeah, when I've seen them on The Walking Dead, on Talking Dead, it's so hilarious because they're all made up. Yeah. And on the show, they wear zero makeup. Looks so Their hair is a mess. They're covered in dirt, just like all the. I mean, Daryl looks like a freaking bum. You know what I yes. mean? But it's like it's so funny to see because it's almost like they overdo the makeup because they're. I think they're probably you know there's some sort of unconscious self consciousness about the fact that I play this person online that's like or on TV that's so dirty and right mess. You know, I want to make sure because I, I mean, she they were both really dressed to the nines. Um, I take it the yo-yo is what she found in the backpack, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope they use that as a weapon. Oh, everybody does. That's going to be <laughs> – oh, man. I want I want that to be a tribute piece. <laughs> yo-yo to the dome. Yeah. Um, I thought it was cool to see Daryl siding with Therese. I thought that was cool when you had that whole conflict with, with Rick. Well, that's um, an interesting dynamic. It's a, the interesting is that you've got you've got Rick on the one hand, who's basically like, you know, let's just let's just pull out guns and we're gonna kill this guy, this guy, this guy. And then Tyrese is at the far the other end of the spectrum, who's like, no, oh, no, let's just pet them and tell them they're pretty. <laughs> and then you've got <laughs> <they're> pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Daryl, who's kind of like he's like the the moderate in the middle, who's kind of like. Well, not only the moderate, but through the whole episode and also last episode, he's become the most clear headed. He really and is focused and calm. He's on the target with the mission all the time. You know, here he just defended himself from getting almost killed by that cop. And yet he's the first one to say, dude, this guy is so much more valuable to us alive as another hostage. So let's not kill him. You know what I mean? But that was brilliant too. That, that was, it wasn't, it was, you know, again, what, what do you say all the time in these, in these situations? You see, oh, we shouldn't do that. Rick, remember who we are. We're still humans. He didn't do that. He just said, <laughs> oh, Rick. No. Oh, no. Daryl didn't two. care. Daryl did not care one minute if that guy was alive or dead. In fact, he probably wanted him dead. But the thing, but he saw the but value. that was like the perfect thing to say. Three is better than two. And yeah. then, okay. But that shows such a level of, uh, uh, of calmness in his in his thinking just to, to have just gone through what he and to be able to you know get past that and see the value uh, that was amazing yeah. i mean um so yeah i thought i thought that was great um and let's see um because remember he used to be he used to be like the, the hottest headed one of them of oh, yeah. them all you know season two he was always flipping you know flipping off and oh and, it, it, if this was season two he'd have gone in shot him you know shot right. the cop in the head and looked back at yep. rick and said oh, and oh cut off, was it, who cut off was, his ear and put yeah. it on his necklace yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh wait were you gonna do it oh sorry Didn't. <laughs> um i thought i really loved the whole character arc with rick um I mean, I just think that, you know, he's ruthless and ready to kill, but is able to be reasoned with and defers to the democracy rather than enforcing a dictatorship. You know, he's, he, like you said, I mean, they come up to him and Terry says, so what are we going to do about the guard? He says, well, I'm going to slit his throat. I mean, he's totally like ruthless, yep. but at the same time, he's not like out of control, like a governor or a Gareth and obsessed or, or sociopathic because when they reason with him and say this idea over here makes better sense he can hear that and I've, was prob able to yeah, I've probably never liked rick as much as i as i do now it's like every time i see him in this season he 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 gets elevated status and and which is yeah. great because it, it coincides with the rick that i know in the comic right. book you comic know? And, right yeah well i think they they definitely realized they needed to get him there and they're getting him there now you know and it's it's great to see um let's see what else did i like uh 
It was also cool to see, again, with the, the Rick arc, um, to see the juxtaposition of him with these, these new, these policemen. You know, because here he's a cop, they're cops. You could, there was definitely this sense of brotherhood. You know what I mean? And I feel like every time you and, use the word juxtaposition, I want to yell, drink! Like, we're going to turn into a drinking game. Hey, that's only the first time this, this time. I, I can get two or three more in before you have to drink. Um, Dichotomy and juxtaposition. <laughs> and metaphor. Yes. Symbolic. Um, anyway, the I think that, um, you know, especially when that Lester character starts confiding in him, then you really see that, you know, well, you're just doing your job. You're, you know, you're a fellow cop. Lester, uh, you know, Bob. Bob Lester. Sorry. No. Um, Bob Lam- Lampum. Lamp. Lamston, Lamston. Um, but um, so that I, I thought that was cool because this is really the first time he's come in contact since this whole thing started with with other policemen. You know, um, uh, I liked how they fortified the church before they left. Um, I thought that the cannibal. You know, there's been a lot of religious symbolism through this whole first half of the season. I I feel like, um, and. Uh, I thought this was there was some more of it here. You know, they were kind of cannibalizing that church, um, which I thought was kind of symbolic too. That kind of that the old value of the house of worship is no more. You know, kind of like coming back to the four walls and a roof episode, and it's just that you know the purpose of this new you know of this building in this new world is not as a religious church place, you know, or a spiritual place, but is a place to protect us, and that you know every aspect of it. That's its value. You know, the pipes on the organ are, you know, they're not sacred musical. There are, you know, barriers to zombies coming up through the front. You know what I mean? And that I thought was pretty cool. Um, I got I got Macbeth out of it with uh, with out out damn spot when he was on the floor trying to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kill. Yeah. He's trying to yeah wash it away. Um, Love the exchange between Rick and Michonne at that point, too, where she and he says, I owe Carol. And that was says, a, we, that was probably my favorite inter- and, yep. exchange. And she says, "We all owe Carol." And he says, "No, I owe I owe her more." Yeah, and, and that was awesome. Um, I mean, he did kick her ass to the curb, you know. So it's like <laughs> the fact that she came back and saved yeah, him. Yeah, but this isn't the first time that he's that he's acquiesced that he's yeah. you know he owes her, and and I and I like that. So I it's yep. I I'm I've, I've kind of you know as i said in the in the beginning of the season that when they hook up again he better be he better be sorry for what he did not just be you know and uh, it's comments like that that show that it's not you know he still owes that owes her a debt and he's very cognizant of that and it's right. not something that's just okay we're just going to forget about it so no i agree and coming back to um another thing i want to mention coming back to laura's um theory about gabriel and um the church um because she also said, hold on, I want to get her thing here again. Um, she, the crying in the church in the beginning by Judith, she thought was kind of, for, it was very foreboding of, mm. you know, perhaps Judith. And I think, you know, that that could be. But I thought that that was a really cool um, visual and audio. Here we go. You ready? Drum roll. Juxtaposition. <laughs> Um, because that in his eyes, he was screaming inside as they were locked. Here they were, they were locking him in here. They were nailing the door shut and he was being trapped inside here. And the look, he's sweating. You can see the look in his eyes. And while you hear is that baby screaming. And it was like, that to me was the writer saying he's feeling what she's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I saw that, which was really, I thought, very powerful, good, great TV, you know. Um, I talked about that already. Uh, I mean, I laughed I laughed out loud when Eugene woke up and it was sounding like a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the whole uh, Gretem or Great Great M? Uh, Tara's name that she, do you think there's anything to that? Uh, no. Uh <laughs> I just think that it's uh, just Tara being awkward again. Uh, she's so horribly awkward. It that was that that was this episode's fist bump, you know, air air bump. 
Um, cause they were like, what does that mean? And she's like, it's great M, you know, kind of like great team, I guess the, the TM, I don't know. It was, um, I, I just feel sorry for her cause she tries so hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, she seems to be warming up to people or people seem to be warming up to her. I mean, I think Glenn, you know, is really warmed up to her a lot and everything. I, 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 every scene that she's in though, the character just feels like a third wheel. I, yeah, a we little need to bit. Be we need to be done with her. Just, you know, yeah. yeah. And, well, I, and I don't think she's, I don't I'll think be she surprised if she hangs, if she's around for the, you know, season six, I'll be very surprised. Yeah. Um, at first I thought that the, uh, the whole Abraham on his knees for 60 minutes, uh, was overdone, but, um, then I got thinking about it more and I, I think he's not only in this in this sequence or in this episode. He's not only lost, but he's like completely disgusted with himself. And at you that point, I mean? his legs have fallen asleep, so he can't get <laughs> up anyway. <laughs> I think you know he's finally seeing the truth, you know, and he's not being blinded by the obsession with this mission to get to DC and Eugene's lie, and so everything's rushing in on him. Not only about his own past family experience and stuff with the, the loss of his family, but all these other people that have died, all these other horrible things that they've gone through because he was like too blind to see this. I mean, every other person in the world could kind of see that something wasn't quite right with this whole story with Eugene, but he was like hook, line, and sinker. And, and I think he's, you know, I think when he stands up to, to um rosita and then gets the gun pointed at him from maggie i think he's like ready to 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 check out you know he's back at the point where eugene found him with the gun in his mouth he's like let's just get this done with because i just i hate myself and i hate this world and i hate what's happening but i think that when she doesn't kill him and then he has more time on his knees (laughs) i think he's I ter- I ter- and this is just I haven't read this or seen this anywhere, but I just interpreted this that he's hanging on to see if Eugene lives, and if Eugene dies, that's it. He's done. He has he has made too many mistakes. He has screwed up too many people. He's overreacted with Eugene and almost killed him. Now, if he dies, he's done. He'll kill himself. He'll let them kill him. Whatever. He's done. If Eugene lives he has an opportunity to redeem himself and to, to try and correct what he's done. And of course, Eugene wakes up and what do we see? His hand come down and grab that bottle of water. And to me, that, that was really powerful. And so the, the, it was a big payoff for me for the 60 minutes of seeing him because I was like, well, he's on his knees still? Jesus Christ. But when I think about it like that, it, it, uh, it was good stuff, I thought. And that was, that was all my highlights for goods. What about you? Well, the episode started off with me kind of laughing when uh, Sasha's uh, going to town on the pew with that with the axe, and then so she's in the front and it's like whack whack whack, and then it's Ty- uh, Tyrese and Daryl, and uh, and Tyrese just looks at him and he's like, "Oh, you were, you, you know, it's good you weren't here for it." And Daryl goes, "She hanging in there," and the, the look that like Chris Coleman, uh, you know, the Tyrese gives him is kind of at first it's kind of like there's a pause. And then he looks over at Sasha, and that pause in his eyes was, uh, I did the dialogue for it. It was like, oh, hell no, bro. She's going <laughs> Paul Bunyan on that pew over there. I mean, what the hell do you think? Of course she's not doing well. And then it, yeah, she's, she's, or no, he goes, no. I mean, no, like, yeah, no, no. Duh. But anyway, I, I thought that was just kind of funny. <laughs> um, the, like I said in the beginning, I, I liked how this whole thing gets, gets kind of spread out and it just, it got to breathe. Uh, we even got to get in the hospital. Um, uh, the, the line between with, uh, Rick and Michonne was, was awesome. And that was, I, I really liked that. Um, yeah, I didn't talk. I didn't make any comments about the hospital. Hmm. I have uh, a few, but we'll get to it. Uh, Rosita, uh, that's my bad. Um, Rick really liked, really liked Rick. I really liked the, the dynamic between the three, um, uh, you know, Tyrese, Daryl, and, and, and Rick. Uh, I, I love how these guys, just their tactics, you know, they, they send Noah out as bait. And yeah. Then the cops come and then they descend on them and, yeah. and they've got him. And it's just, it, 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 it's why stuff like that is really smart, which is why what happens at the end of the episode is yeah. really dumb. And you're just, 
<laughs> yeah. You know, you have, there's your dichotomy. There's your juxtaposition of the dumb at the, you know, the, the, the smart. It's we gotta like, have one, we gotta have one falling van in every episode, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, and I, and I liked uh, Gabriel uh, being conflicted. I liked uh, some of the new, um, some of the new, uh, you know, what we see using the netting to catch the fish uh, yeah. and stuff like that. Some so stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much all the stuff that that you already talked to. Or a lot of people, a lot of people complaining about the um, unrealisticness of uh, the three walkers underneath the telephone pole. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to kick off the bad with that. The, my bad is that uh, we no longer have anything to fear with the walkers. But the only thing you have to fear is a group of them. So we got the napalm walkers, which everybody just kind of is like, oh, just step over them. And it's like walking over, you know, piles of dog dew in your backyard. You just like tiptoe through the <laughs> mines. Dog dew, dog dew that bites. <laughs> but, Biting dog dew. But you know, when when Daryl's on the ground with the the cop on him and they're and and they're fighting, the problem is is I. At no point am I on the edge of my seat. Oh my, is Daryl going to get bit? Is there? No. Again, we go back to the core. Daryl, Rick, Michonne, nothing will ever happen to them. Uh, and, you know, now we see the walkers in the, in the, you know, under the telephone poles and uh, under the telephone pole. And there isn't, unless you get surrounded by them, they just don't seem to be a thing anymore. You know, it seems they, they're just, um, which is, I don't know, it, it, it's kind of annoying because they're, uh, I don't know, we've gotten, we've got gotten kind of used to them, I guess. And they're just, yeah, they're I, think, just I, think, I think that's a combination of, <clears throat> well, a lot of that, yes, is, is I think we've been watching it now for five years. So they've been dispatching zombies every episode for five years. <clears throat> you start to feel they're not that much of a threat. So they but, took out the they took out all the fast ones. Now we're just down to the slower ones. Yeah, so we'll yeah. Get down to but, the invalids at the end. But it, that doesn't bother me because you know, for instance, I I felt very tense through the entire um, episode last week of consumed, and for the first time in a long time, I really felt like the zombies were scary. You know because. There was lots of them, and they could be around any corner in that urban setting. And, um, you know, if you trip up and, you know, everything's fine, but if you trip up and fall or if she had shot uh, Noah in the leg, uh, you know, then you know, all bets are off. But you know if you I mean? trip and fall and throw a flaming pad of paper... <laughs> They'll go for the bright shiny object and leave you alone. I think if they, I think they'd go for the body first, flame second, but that's just my guess. So I hear you, though. I hear uh, you. Uh, the, uh, actually I got to back up. So one of my, for some reason, I just thought it was kind of cool, cool. And because of the scariness of it was when you see up on the, what was the water tower? It said evac here. Yes. Um, and then it's all blacked out in these, these jellified, uh, uh, walkers around the ground. And you just know that somebody said, Hey, bring everybody here. And then they just nuked the site. Uh, they pawed the site. Um, I thought that was just really chilling because that's you know you can only imagine that it was probably a bunch of people you know uh, uh, running to safety running to a helicopter uh that was that was there to pick people up and someone in their midst somehow a walker got in there and then it was just like forget it and you know take them all out um uh yeah. the other bet okay I, I already mentioned I didn't really care for uh, Tara, Tara Glenn, and uh, uh, Rosita. I like that Rosita's got got more lines now. I love that she that she stood to uh, to Abraham, um, but uh, I don't know, the three of them didn't didn't do anything for me. Um, Beth in the hospital. Okay, so here's the part that I don't. What I I guess I don't understand, and I, I it kind of counts as a bad. I guess is <clears throat> it doesn't seem to me like Lawson has Lawson right the 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 female the Don. cop Don, Don. Uh, Larson Don Larson. Uh, it doesn't seem to me like she's got a firm handle on her people. Why it, they outnumber her? If there's the problem, either they were just lying at the end that no, we don't want to be with her. She's she's bad and blah blah. blah. So either they're full of it at the end and that's actually just a big happy family up there, or 
there that's true and if it is true why don't you just overrun her like right. you're more than she is so I don't understand that. And if somebody can shed some light on it, uh, I'd appreciate it. Well, I, I think, no, I think, <clears throat> I think you're right. And I think that they're trying to show us that that's what's, that's the state of the, of affairs at that, that hospital right now, that it is a tinderbox on edge and she is barely hanging on to authority and, um, that that's all starting to unwind and fall apart. And, and I think she's, she herself sees that. I mean, she turns to Beth and says, you know, I'm barely hanging on to this situation and you're, you know, this shit you're doing is not helping me. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, I, I think, I think you're right. I think, I agree. I think in reality, something probably would have, have already taken place, but by this point, but we're supposedly coming in when it's just about to, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and it'll be interesting to see what happens when there's a showdown, you know, cause, um, I think it'll put, it's going to put Dawn my guess is it's going to put Dawn uh, at odds with a number of her, her cops. You know, oh, it's yeah. my guess. You know, she. My guess is that she's going to want to play ball with Rick. My guess is that she's going to want to do an exchange and you know and and have as little injuries as possible. And there are going to be police that are under her that are going to feel like, no, we got to take these guys out. They'll just come back. There'll be a continuing problem. Blah 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 blah. blah. And there'll be two different camps about that, and it'll end up being a big big problem internally for her what did you think of um the exchange between dawn and beth about the medical get, not so much the exchange but what did you think about her giving her the key to the medicine cabinet so that she could get medicine or treat carol well yeah, that was uh, you're you're kind of giving her the keys of the kingdom right there i mean le letting her get access to to you know the, the supply yeah. i thought that was at first, I kind of took it as like a show of faith, right? You know, as uh, because at first when she's like when she's talking with Beth, and of course you never take people like that seriously at face value. Oh, she's got an ulterior motive. She's Beth. Don't believe her. She's lying. Sing or something. Scare her away. And you know <laughs> that didn't. And then when she gives her the key, that was like a show of faith. I took as as like I'm legit. You know, trust me. So. Uh, that's that's what I took from it, and then she was able to help Carol. And yeah, the doc the doctor says to her that you know she can't be trusted, and and I felt uncomfortable with it immediately. I felt like it was a setup. Yeah, I felt like especially because the first thing what she says to her is, "I was wrong about you. I thought you were weak. Yeah, but you know you're not. You're strong, or whatever the exact wording was." And then she says, "You know," then she gives her the key, and you know, to me it was kind of like. I see you now as strong, so I see you as a potential threat. Ally. Oh, well, it could be ally or it could be threat. You know, and if it's ally, then she's giving her the key because she's trying to I help took it her. as an ally because if, if if she's got this issue with her people, like I'm barely under control. Right. Well, I need a friend and you know, I was wrong about you. Here's the key and let's be friends. And right. that's, that's No, I agree. And and it could be that way, or it could be that I see you as as a threat. And I'm going to give you this key and, and then try to like get you ca caught doing this. And I'm going to claim I don't know anything about it. So you must have stole the key. And then people are going to want you out. Oh, interesting. Okay. You know what I mean? And I think that's what the doctor is thinking is probably happening because he says, well, you can't trust her, you know? Yeah. Um, so I felt like best being set up <clears throat> a little bit. Oh, she, maybe she was being crossed. Oh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Good job. Good job. Uh, I just pulled yeah, that one out of yeah, my butt. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yes. Yes, I think I think maybe she was. Um, That's all I got for bads. My bads, um, you know, at, at this point, holding prisoners never works. No. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, <clears throat> you know... I, I, I agree with Tyrese and I agree with Daryl. This was a better plan. You go into that situation. You don't know what you're going to find inside there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got Noah telling you one thing, but you don't know too much about him. You don't know what he has or hasn't seen. You don't know if anything's changed since he's left. Um, so you don't know what you're going to go into. They're all armed. Uh, it, it could very easily, as Tyrese said, turn into a bloodbath real quick. Right. Um, lots of bullets flying. <clears throat> so this did make more sense, but now they've lost all their surprise. Yeah, they've lost momentum. 
they've lost momentum and they've lost all their surprise because now this guy's gone back and told them there's this group this is how many they are this is what they're armed with this is where they are i mean it's just they're yeah. just it's screwed the pooch you know what yeah. i mean so um, you know party it feels like eh, they should have gone with team you know with rick's <laughs> Rick's idea, but hindsight is twenty twenty. But, but holding prisoners never seems to work anymore in in this uh, in this new paradigm. Um, I'm getting kind of tired. I'm getting <laughs> kind of tired of the there. There's one. There, there's one trope. Uh, I guess trope. There, there's one uh, nail that they keep going back to that that keeps re recurring, and it's the thing that trips everybody up all the time, and that is trusting somebody every time you give in and you trust somebody after all the things that you've seen you got this guy bob who's who's sounds you know he he kind of tricks rick with his uh his uh congeniality his uh his repentance of you know or just look i'm like you i'm a cop and i'm just trying to do the right thing and and I, i'm really a good guy and rick is like okay i believe you and then you know sasha she gets suckered because she hears bob and it's like oh my god it's the spirit of bob talking to me and <laughs> you know and it, it but we keep going back to that that's what that's the big foil that that trips everybody up you know it should be nobody she should got, be left alone she got with a prisoner. by bob yes <laughs> Crossed signals. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. It's funny now that uh, yeah, we're figuring it's it out. Funny now. It's all this stuff's popping up now. Um, but it, Sasha should never have been left alone w with him. I mean, it's yes, he's we captured him and he's got he's zip tied behind his back. But dude, we, how you're four seasons into this, you should you'd know by now. You don't do that. So that, that's getting kind of. When are they going to learn? You know, so. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that they were, you know, I got that it was down for one of my bads also. Um, you know, she's still wounded over over losing Bob. That's clear from the beginning of the episode. Then she has this, you know, this big moment of, uh, you know, of um, emotional connection with her brother. And, you know, he kind of helps her see it a whole nother way. And I think it makes it easier for her. And she's more accepting of the situation and she feels better about it. And, and I think then, therefore, is more susceptible to, you know, to his story, you know, of his loss. And, you know, she wants to help him, you know, in that, in that way, because I think she's now more susceptible, she's more susceptible to that since she had that conversation with Tyrese. At least that's what we're supposed to believe. Right. She has always been so hard as nails. And so it was really, even though she was at this weak moment emotionally, um, but that's, you know, that, that, that in some ways that's real life. You know, sometimes we, we have emotional things that are going on and they make us weak and we make bad decisions, you know, and um, that was a bad decision. She wasn't seeing, she was seeing what she wanted to see. She wasn't seeing, you know, what could be or what might happen. And, uh, you know, it was a stupid, stupid thing to do. Yeah. So, um, and it's always hard to see the plot of the story hinge on on a character's stupid move but the sad truth at least in my opinion is that that's real life you know what i mean shit like that is what causes stuff to happen people yeah. make stupid decisions and then life goes tumbling in a whole nother direction and um it's sad but but that is very real um i wanted to jump back just a second because I, I i want to talk one more thing about gabriel um and some of the religious symbolism. I thought, you know, I, I think, as I said before, I think he's uh, running away from what he sees as this horrific group of people who did these horrific things in his church. Um, but part of that, I think, is that he still hasn't accepted really in himself what a horrible thing he did. Oh, not at all. Yeah. Right. And he thinks what they just did is somehow worse. Right. But in some ways, what he did is worse because he doesn't really know the situation with the termites and the fact that they just probably saved a whole lot of other people from dying down the road and also he killed a lot more people by not letting in all those people outside right um so and for a much more selfish reason right you know what i mean so i think that there's this guilt that's that's kind of 
propelling him and he's looking for ways to to avoid it and he's focusing on this rick's team and he's got to get away from them but when he gets outside and starts running away he steps on that nail and to me that was very symbolic i mean it was kind of like it's almost as if he's interpreting these signs from above let's say that you know he thinks are coming from above um or from god or whatever that you know these people are bad and he's got to get away from them but yet he's also getting messages that he shouldn't be running away right. <laughs> he should be sticking with them and he's not listening to those you know and that was one of them um and you know I, it's a pretty literal crucifixion like nail situation right i mean through the hands through the feet is how you're crucified well right? you're through the ankles and the wrist but still it's yeah. with a nail yeah right so that was pretty powerful i thought um and then of course the i talked about the fact that he runs into the other zombie he can't kill because she's got a, a cross on um the other bad i had um you mean the zombie who was nowhere near him when he heard something moving in the woods and then all of a sudden she was right there on top of him <laughs> well I, he here i think the sound comes from like four different directions two three different times or something you know yeah. I mean? and then all of a sudden she comes out from one side yeah, yeah i agree um yeah, I guess the, the, those were the only really two bads, the holding the prisoners, um, never working out, and, and Sasha um, uh, and her vulnerability at that moment. What was your ugly? Well, my ugly was the end of the show. I mean, the, that was when he, when he, when uh, Bob says his, gives his little story and, and, and Sasha's like, okay, I'll help you. As soon as they get up, I was like, this is not good. And then right. just the way they, they framed it with yeah. first standing at the window, they gave it away with that shot. You just knew. <laughs> yes, they yes, they did. That, that's bad stuff's going to happen. And then, you know, of course it does. And you're just like, for me, idiot. It, you it know? Was, for me, it was when he said, I can show you. Yes. As soon as he said that, exactly. I was like, up, 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 up. Yep. That's when I would have taken the butt of my gun and hit him in the face. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, they should at least put tape on these people's mouths so they can't talk to you. You know what I mean? And try to like, anyway, my ugly was, um, so that was your ugly. Yeah. Okay. That was my ugly, ugly was a good ugly. And I thought that the melted zombie fight scene with Daryl and the cop just was fantastic. I, I, I thought it was intense. Um, I, I liked those zombies again. I think that, you know, we talk about it every week and, and thankfully we do because I think it's awesome, but they try to do something different and unique every week with the zombies. This was so cool. The melted zombies, the, the, the fact that they're kind of stuck on the ground, but yet they're still a, a potential threat. If you're not paying attention and here you are rolling around on the ground, you read, granted, you walk through them with no problem. Like, dog do biting dog do like you yeah. said you know what i mean <laughs> but if you're gonna roll around in the ground don't roll around in ground and dog do okay <laughs> but if you're gonna roll around the ground then all of a sudden these things become lethal you know potential hazards you know with their snapping teeth especially when you're reaching out with your bare hands you know without being able to see where you're reaching to try and grab something you know so unless of course you bowling ball one of them with two of your fingers in the eye sockets and <laughs> hit somebody over the head but, you know those zombies were it was actually i, I think the, the the horror of what i imagined the history of that scene what happened there yeah and you know we talk about the dead are, are reanimated they're, they come to life and we feel sorry for some of these sad sacks loping along and uh, right. you know I, I I love the special effects here. I loved w what they did, and I don't know if I've ever felt so sorry for a zombie before as I did for those guys because they are they're just like <laughs> living. Dude, put them out of their misery for God's sake! They're they're, right. they're everything's burned away. They're liquefied, and this yeah. is just an a, a, you know a, a dis, you know a dishonorable way to 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 go. You know, yeah, I, just, I felt really bad about it. And you know what? I may be reaching here, but what the hell? Which is um, a, it, that's not like you at all. No, it wouldn't be a first. But those poor bastards were crossed. I mean, it was our government, our people, our military that bombed them with napalm and killed them. You know what I mean, and burned them all to the ground. And here they were trying to escape, evacuate, and they get fried. You know what I mean? So lots of people getting crossed last night yes or the night before they were just not um, realizing yes but uh so yeah I, I thought that scene was awesome um i agree you know i never i don't know though man when the, i never thought really that daryl was in danger but 
you know, I would not put it past the show to have something happen to him, like have him get a finger bit off by a zombie and then they have to cut off his hand. I mean, we know in the comic, Rick has been without a hand since the governor. Um, and they've always said that, you know, they wish he, Kirkman has been quoted as saying that he wish he hadn't done that or hadn't done it as early as he did. But um, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that happen in the TV show. And it doesn't necessarily have to be to Rick. You know what I mean? It could be to Daryl. Then they turn around and chop his hand off in order to make sure he doesn't turn into a zombie. So he's still got Daryl, but now he's got one hand. It could be because it, that's a good point because Rick and Daryl in the, in the show are... I guess if you took a composite of the two of them, you get Rick in the comic book. So you could, you could, you could do that. I, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that yeah. happening. I see also, uh, I de definitely for me, Daryl is Tyrese in the comic. You know, he's, he's kind of Rick's, uh, temperature gauge and, um, you know, teammate and, uh, confidant and, um, you know, I, I just think, so I, I mean, I was worried at the end when Herschel ended up being the one, but I thought, you know, I thought Daryl might be the one to go with the, with the, with the head chop and by the, the governor. But, um, you know, it is a different, different world here with the TV show. They've got to worry about ratings and everything else, but, oh, yeah. you know, which is interesting too, because I, I, I wanted to point out that, um, Jason and Karen, who have uh, the Walking Dead cast, which uh, I, I listen to religiously, and a lot of the listeners uh, we have have come from there. We appreciate that. But um, th he had an interesting take, too, which was that the show, he kind of begrudgingly, you know, the show has a history of kind of getting rid of the uh, uh, um, characters that aren't as popular. And um, like Andrea... And now I think, yeah, I think so. I think you know uh, Herschel is obviously an exception to that, but um, his, so his feeling was is that it would be it would be Beth before it would be Carol, because uh, Beth doesn't command as yeah. much. I don't think uh, of um, of a, a fan audience uh, as the others. But um, so that was an interesting theory too as to why it might be might be Beth. But I don't think he was even thinking about her there, even thinking about the fact that you know, it could be a a wild card here, uh, in Judith. Yeah, I think it's I think it's totally Judith. <laughs> I'm, now I'm you're, in, I'm now in that. you're now you're Camp Laura, huh? One hundred percent. I'm just law. I'm just like it could be freaking anybody now, you know. I think there's gonna be a few. I don't think I I, I don't think Judith Do is gonna be alone. I think there's gonna be a couple. Oh wow! Yeah, it's going to be. I wonder if Tyrese is going to get it. No. 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 No hmm. way. All right, who's your uh, zombie kill of the week? Oh geez, I didn't write it down, but you know, it's got to. You got to go with the, you know, the bowling ball. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Yeah, it's absolute. You know, plus it was so great to see. I've been waiting. I don't think this has happened yet in the series, but I've been waiting for somebody to use a body part of a zombie as a weapon, you know, like rip off an arm and then beat a zombie with the arm. I, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't think we've seen that yet. Yeah, and I don't this, know. This was, and they do that sometimes in the comics, but uh, this was, this was cool. That was just, uh, and I love that, like the whole spine kind of came yeah. out with it, you know, and uh, uh, somehow I got to work that into my tribute for this, uh, this week. Uh, yeah, that was my zombie kill of the week, too. Uh, and what about character? Oh, so many good ones. You know, and to your point earlier about the fact that, you know, the episode kind of moved around to a lot of people, and um, and it was kind of refreshing. You know, it was great to get back and see all the different stories. I liked how that um, gave us a, a, an action packs part and then also a calm, more character part, which was, of course, the, uh, the Glenn Maggie section and stuff. But... Um, uh, character, I don't know. I mean, I, I really loved um, the way the the whole Rick arc. You know, the the the, the fact that he could be from zero to a hundred, as as one of our writers, uh, one of our uh, listeners wrote in, in 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 such a ruthless way, but yet at the same time um, be able to be reasoned with and uh, go with the logical decision or the dem democratic decision and it just becoming that Rick from the comic that we love so much, you know, so um, I think I got to go there. Yeah, mine too. I think it's uh, I, I just 
and I rarely go with Rick as my favorite character, but he, <laughs> gotta say, I'm, I'm, I'm digging him. I, I like this. <laughs> it's all going to go downhill when Judith dies. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Oh, that, that, I don't know what. That's going to be, there's, there ain't going to be a dry eye in the house. No. I wonder who he's going to get phone calls from then after that. <laughs> Throwing. <laughs> Hello? Goo goo ga <laughs> Oh, that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, let's uh, get to some of these. We'll probably uh, truncate, uh, shorten some of these up because we're getting a little long in the tooth on this uh, episode. But um, yeah, We uh, had a lot of people wrote in on uh, Cross. Yeah, a lot of people. So we, we love... Uh, uh, Love them, and uh, you know we'll read what we you know as much as we can. All right. So Gary Dombrowski wrote in, said, "Yeah, I like this episode a little more than consumed last week. The part with the almost botched abduction of the police officers was pretty cool. How could you not love cheese pizza walkers <laughs> lying all over the place?" <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I especially like it when Daryl gripped the walker's head like a bowling ball and beat the cop over the head with it. Um, that cop owed Daryl his life because if not for him, I'm convinced Rick would have turned the head, turned his, turned the guy's head into a canoe. <laughs> Never heard that expression, but it's great. Oh my gosh, that's uh, that's uh, Kurt Russell from uh, Tombstone. He has a <laughs> gun on uh, the guy in the street, and he's like, you know, what if I turn your head into a canoe? <laughs> that's such uh, a great visual. Sasha, 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 what? With what the group has gone through, why in the world would you turn your back on someone you have in captivity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, instead of just guarding your prisoner, she agrees to do a mercy killing for him. How sweet would this not be the absolute last thing you would do when you're in the process of executing a rescue mission? Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it was bad. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, I, I just had to read this sentence because he uses cross in here. I really love seeing Rosita and Maggie getting in Abraham's face. It's about time he climbs off his cross yeah puts on his big boy panties and just gets over himself <laughs> um <laughs> i just envisioned that big huge military red-headed guy in a pair of panties yes. <laughs> that's a scary image i didn't image it at all so it's probably telling <laughs> well you're a healthier person than me <laughs> Uh, uh, Gary also says, I bet, uh, I, I would like to ask how in the hell do three people become trapped under a falling utility pole at the same time? I bet yeah. they're related to this, to the three stooges. <laughs> um, I was a bit floored when Dawn offered Beth the key to the medicine cart so she could save Carol. I could hardly believe my ears when Dr. Edwards asked if she stole the key or was it given to her? Uh, like he said, he mentions how you said, uh, Edwards said, don't trust her. Talk about the pot and the kettle. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. what the point of Gabriel leaving the church was. For being a man of God, he sure demonstrated some serious strength body slamming that walker. <laughs> the one thing I'm puzzled a little, a little puzzled over is this fragile control Dawn has over their officers. They're armed, and any one or more of them could go for a power grab whenever they want. Boy, am I long-winded this week. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, Gary. And, yeah, uh, great, great, great letter, Gary. Uh, I'll read another one. This is from Abby Q. Uh, listener number two here, he says. He gives it three and a half. Uh, good were the survival skills being used more. How they be, uh, they have a team name, Great M. Can't, uh, I can watch Maggie do things all day. Just don't say much. <laughs> um, he says it's a new zombie term, rotter, but we've, they've used that yeah, before. Yeah, I think we've heard that before. I think, uh, the governor, governor used did, that, yeah. yeah. Um, Let's see. Bad. Why would you trust anyone? Come on, Sasha. Um, let's see. Although I might have been called a Beth hater by a couple listeners. Oh, that could have easily been handled when they left. Just saying. I think I might have missed something there. Moving on. Uh, oh, yeah. He echoes things that uh, Gary said and what I said. Why are these armed guys listening to Dawn? They're armed. They're stronger. Uh, and if everyone's complaining, why don't they just take over? She's no governor. She doesn't even pose a threat. Uh, ugly, he has it a good, is Tara, much needed humor, I think, like you guys said last week, it's just nice to see people smoking, doing it, and being humorous. <laughs> I don't mind the fist bump, and if you're bothered by it, maybe someone needs a hug. <laughs> Tara haters, for real. Uh, this episode will lead up to Coda, I guess, and hopefully the end of this godforsaken Beth storyline. <laughs> it was okay in all honesty, everybody and their mama is going to mention the walker skull that Daryl used, so yeah, have at it. Bites kill ya. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, he also mentions uh, take your time, babble about everything and anything. Like other listeners, you guys help my time fly at my job, so thanks. <laughs> that seems to be a common a, a common thing for people. They're like, P 
people are mad that, that that we you know that we didn't post earlier in the week because man my drive sucks and uh, we're we're just one step above total boredom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally bored. I guess I could listen to biters. <laughs> Let's see. Drive this pencil through my eye. Listen to biters. Oh. Uh. All right, let's see. We also heard from uh, Tom. Uh, Tom. Uh, Tom DeRosa. Tom DeRosa, yeah. Let's see. Um, guys, crossed. Holy hell, am I right? Kurt, the tribute art has been awesome every week. Can't wait to see this week's. Um, Streetwalkers? <laughs> anyway, Cross. So when did everyone stop listening to Rick again? Exactly. How quick can they, yeah, right? How quick can they forget? Uh, how that works out. Uh, bring back the dictatorship. Go in there all cutthroat and, well, too late for that. Now it's time to play Diplomat again with Batshit Warlord of the Week. <laughs> what, could, what could go wrong? <laughs> you know, I hear a lot of It's very funny, but I hear a lot of people complain about that. But that, that like, it's just kind of like um, they come up with a new bad guy. But I think it's like uh, that's... You have, I mean, without that, you, you don't have much else to story on. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta have, you gotta have some bad. And when we have periods of time when there isn't a bad, you know, it's uh, it's definitely slower. But um, and 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 you're gonna have these little kingdoms that get set up. Someone's gotta correct. be in charge. And bad correct. guys never think that they're bad. They think right. that they're well. Yeah, I mean, the termites thought that they were, you know, doing a good, you know, doing yeah. a good thing. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so the, uh, but that's not a knock on the episode, just on what I think they should do. Overall, I think it was pretty solid, though it kind of felt like part of a two part episode. This season is setting a high, high bar. What the hell happened to Father Gabriel? Speaking of off the reservation, <laughs> yeah. glad to see Abraham is maybe getting it back together. I can't guess what's going to happen to this group. Rejoin the others? Someone get killed? There isn't any obvious course for them, which is great. Uh, you know what? I'm going to interject here. I, I I don't know how many cliffhangers we're gonna have in the finale, but um, my guess is I think we're gonna have more than one. Um, my guess is we're only gonna get complete resolution on maybe the 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 uh, hospital. Um, I think whatever's gonna happen at the church um, is not gonna be completely resolved. Possibly I don't know. Maybe they'll become maybe Glenn and and Abraham and those guys will have come back to the church. And that, that's how the people, you know, how the, the, the few that are at the church will survive um, or be rescued. But I think there's another also possible nightmare coming in the finale. And that is that freaking horde on the ranch. I, I agree. Because they showed it again. Yes. And, and even then, and then Glenn says to her, don't even look at it. Don't even look at it. In other words, they're like almost pretending like it's not there. Yeah. Meanwhile, all you need is one straggler to kind of see them, and then boom, it's all going to chain react dominoes, and those oh, yeah. things are going to start coming from it. And they don't have, they don't have wheels now. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, um, I, 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 and there's a great sequence in the book um, with that involves Abraham, and it's actually Rick and Carl, but where they encounter this herd and barely get out of that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep. yep. Yeah. So that could I think that could be what's going on. So you may end up with these, you know, the church being attacked, them being attacked by the horde and the the big fight battle going down at the at the hospital. Um Ooh. could be a lot of cliffhangers. Um let's see getting back to Tom. Uh the others are obviously going to have it out at the hospital somehow and my guess is a bad day for Carol. Better not be Beth, damn it. <laughs> Uh, my favorite scene this week was just after Daryl fights off the big cop and Rick has the gun on him and is going to shoot him. Daryl talks him out of it. Quote, three is better than two. Love that because I was yelling at the TV for Rick to shoot the guy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl made me feel a little a little too eager to murder people. That jerk. <laughs> Bring back the dictatorship, dictatorship now. Keep up the great podcasting, guys. Makes my horror show commute more tolerable. <laughs> That's great. Good one, Tom. Let's see. Um, let's see. I got we got Leslie. Uh, Leslie wrote in. Uh, I enjoyed this episode, not quite as much as last week though. 
So I'll give it 3.5. Uh, the other posters have pretty much covered the format of last night's program, so I'll stick to the main points. Good. The tension this episode built up. There were several times that I was on the edge of my seat, most notably Daryl's fight with the policeman while the workers were napping at his face, snapping at his face. Also, <laughs> yeah, not napping. <laughs> uh, also, the part where Tara was ta uh, taking Bob to put his friend out of his misery. Bad move, Tara. And that was my bad. She shouldn't have trusted I him. Think she met Sasha. Uh, yeah, you're right. She did mean Sasha. Ugly. Uh, Dawn. I think her leadership style is very weak. I think she's hanging on by the skin of her teeth. A good leader doesn't say one thing and then do another, as she did in the scene with Bath and the drug cupboard key. Uh, that might cause her a lot of trouble when Rick and the groups get there. I doubt she can have any confidence in her troops. Anything could happen with them. Character of the week. Couldn't really pick one. Everyone made a good contribution this week. Killer of the week, Daryl ripping the head off the walker. I'm assuming that walker died because of it. I know, that's a stretch, but I liked it. So, I uh, totally agree. Good letter, Leslie. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Then we have uh, Lara. <clears throat> Howdy to all you international listeners, Lara says. I myself am from the great state of Colorado, Home to the world-class skiing, South Park, and some sort of legalized plant. <laughs> Recently legalized plant. Uh, guys, since this episode seemed a lot of setup, I mostly have little notes, a theory, and an op-ed. One, I found the most intriguing aspects of this episode were the things that had me scratching my head. What is Dawn up to? Is she truly a bad guy or just a misguided leader at the end of a rope? Which we kind of talked about, you know, it could go either way. Right. Uh, what is Dr. Edwards up to? Uh, I'm now more suspicious of him than I am of Dawn. Yeah, when he said don't trust her, yeah, he was definitely, there was a bad vibe with him. Yeah, you know, you know when, we first, in, when we first met him uh, in Beth's episode uh, uh, in Slabtown, when we first met him, uh, he seemed like, the guy that you wanted to like. There's something about yeah. this guy. I kind of like him. And then the more you see him, every every scene he's in, you're like, uh, this guy's just sketch. Yeah, there's a dark, there's a darkness in him. Uh, why did Father Gabriel run away? He wasn't being kept prisoner. I think he's up to something shady. Uh, number two, my Walker kill has to go to the bowling ball zombie that Daryl used to slap the cop. Uh, of course, it's so disgusting and badass that only Daryl could pull it off. Uh, three, my character of the week was the tie between Rosita and Tara. I agree with Jeff. Yay! Oh my god! That's da, one! Da, 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 da. <laughs> that I'm really liking Rosita's sass, and I enjoy Tara's quirky sense of humor. Kind of reminds me of my own. Um, and then this was her theory for the mid-season finale, which basically I already went into about um, uh, Gabriel and Judith at the church. Um, but then she adds, uh, but if it is down to Carol or Beth dying, here's my opinion from purely a storyline standpoint. In my opinion, it should be Carol. She's already critically injured. Even if they free her, she's not going to be 100% for months, if ever again. <laughs> that's a hell of a reason to, that's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're a gimp to get you out of here. Damaged goods. <laughs> Damaged goods. Uh, hard to survive in the zombie apocalypse with massive injuries. Also, we have seen all the colors of Carol, from downtrodden victim to loving mother to grieving parent, from decisive leader to stone-cold killer, and finally to admired savior of the group. She's had her dark, broken moment, her hero moment, and her moment of redemption. How much more of Carol can the writers give us? Uh, now, Beth is a blank slate, a character with so many new possibilities to explore, especially with her age and being one of the few young people to survive the zombie apocalypse. I know it would spark a small fan revolt, but personally, if one of these characters have to go, I'd rather keep a character we've yet to explore rather than recycling more character arcs with one that has come completely full circle. Okay, I will duck now to avoid the flying tomatoes. <laughs> I think she makes a good point, but I'm starting to think now... I don't think it's going to be either of them uh, now. She tainted the water. Well, it's too obvious. I mean, they got the it's Coda totally title. Everyone thinks Carol's had her her heroic moment. Everybody's looking for either one of those two. It's not going to be them. Yeah, it's not. Totally not. Yep. Guys, you always do an excellent job, even if we have to wait to hear you. <laughs> yes. I know, right? Everybody, all the other cast, man, they're on a Monday. I say, like, uh, The Walking Naked is a cast I listen to sometimes. They They do these flash ones, like The Night Of. You know, with their like instant recap, and then they do a longer one on Monday. But, you know, we're like, we're lucky if like Friday we get a. <laughs> ah, youth. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, so, so, anyway, keep it up. Cheers. So, 
Awesome. Very good letter, Laura. Thanks so much. Yes, thank you to everybody for uh, for writing in and for your comments and the the lively chatter that uh, that we get going. Be sure to go to the Facebook page and the poll that's in the in the one post and uh, let's see yeah, let's see many... if we can get that thing cranked up. Let's let's get some votes in well, there. Now it's all it's now it's all focaccia because I didn't have <laughs> Jew, Judas down there. Um, and. Uh, yeah, we yeah. try to respond to the posts on Facebook and to emails too. Sometimes we we wait and respond to them on the show. Um, but uh, definitely, there's there's going to be some interaction with people on the Facebook. It's great. Uh, definitely go there. You can also reach us, uh, like I said, at email, which was at biterspodcast at gmail dot com. And if um, you're on Twitter, feel free to just reach out to us. It doesn't have to be during the show. Reach out to us during the week, and yep. you know, send us links and and uh, start conversations. Whatever, uh, we're always up for that. We love the attention. And, yes, uh, and if you see, <laughs> and if you see stuff that you know you you think we should post up, uh, send it. And yeah, we'll absolutely. Post it up. And if you have nothing, if you're in the the New York metro area and you've got nothing to do the second weekend in December, the 13th and 14th, head down to the Meadowlands, right? For, yeah, uh, it's, Walker uh, Stalker Con, where yep. Kirk will have a table. He'll yep. booth there and. I just got uh, copies of uh, prints of uh, all of the uh, tribute art. Uh, I don't have, I won't have, I don't think I'm going to have crossed uh, or uh, consumed, but you, I have the other ones. I just got, got those back. Kirk did the cover for the program. Of oh, the, yeah, that's too. right. I did the, I did the, well, the poster. There's a show poster they do every, for every show. They, they have, they, it's kind of like a traveling show. They, they have um, in January. They're going to be have a show in San Francisco. They have the one big one in Atlanta. They've got one coming in Chicago and DC. They're really expanding uh, a lot, and they do a original poster design for every show that then goes on T-shirts and posters and becomes a collectible item for that show that people buy. And they they asked me to uh, to do the poster for for the New York show, which I just did. Um, Are you allowed I'm to post it? Well, I, I've asked I asked them about that, and I have not heard back yet. But I'd like to, yeah, as soon as I can, I'll put it up on the Facebook page. Um, it came out really awesome. There's two was, versions. Yeah, there's uh, there's a regular version, and then there's a um, kind of a limited edition, which is um, like weathered and it looks really cool. But um, it uh, it's a well, I won't give too much away, but it's a very iconic New York uh, image that's been kind of zombified. Now. <laughs> This uh, this conversation makes me think, uh, reminds me of, we got somebody who wrote in, who was it who wrote in and said that they were going to take our suggestion for Abrahamisms on a t-shirt and they were working on that? Oh, I, th I don't know about the Abrahamisms, but I know that Kurt um, uh, wrote in and said that uh, uh, all of the art stuff that we're doing and the fact that we're creative people and stuff like that has gotten him inspired and He's um, he's working on an Abraham T-shirt design. Oh, and Laura also the... Laura also wrote in said she was gonna she's gonna go out and get uh, get some some art stuff together and start doing get back on. I guess she used to do some art, so I encouraged her to post it up. Love I to thought, see that. Yeah, I thought I thought somebody had said they were gonna do a shirt with uh, Abraham's uh, sayings on it. So <laughs> that yeah. would be funny. Yeah, anything and, that you guys do, any uh, any artists out there? Yeah, you know, definitely. Send we'll it to post us. That up. Post it and. And, we uh, uh, we also I'll have at uh, at Walker Stalker uh, all of uh, the five issues of our book uh, Z Girl and the Four Tigers that Jeff writes and I illustrate and uh, it's a cool uh, take on the zombie genre. We've got a centuries old female zombie who's a warrior uh, teamed up with four ancient Chinese uh, warrior spirits who take human host form and together they fight all manner of monsters and demons. So um, you can definitely pick that up and find out what Z Girl is all about too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, folks, uh, da, 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 da. I think that's it. <laughs> uh, so, by all means, uh, make sure you go check out, uh, check us out, uh, or check out the other programs at uh, SouthgateMediaGroup.com, uh, the big iTunes page that has all of the podcasts there. If you like uh, American Horror Story, download Disturbed and listen to Scott Malkus uh, and I talk about that show, or Fast Talkers, if you're a Flash fan, we talk about that one. Uh, well, this it's is it. We got tonight. next next week mid season finale. I know, I know. We got to start thinking bets, about place your bets. And we got to think. We got to try and do a couple casts in between. You know, during yes. January. So if you've got suggestions of movies to the, I posted the one about the. the you see the post I put up last week about the original <laughs> the, 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 zombie, Nazi, zombies, Nazi yeah. zombie. Yeah, yeah, I don't. 
I don't know if I that, that looks really look I I I can tolerate some B movie stuff, but when it gets down <laughs> to like the F level, G level, uh, I gotta call it quits. Um, but yeah, if you've got any books we should read or um, uh, movies to see, by all means, give us a shout out. And it doesn't have to be zombies; it could be horror, it could be vampires, whatever. Uh, and uh, we don't discriminate. Zombies, so, zombies, zombies. <laughs> all right, we've bent your ear for long enough. Uh, yes, thanks for listening. Thanks for writing in. Um, definitely listen to uh, to um, not listen, but um, write in after you. We watch the season finale. I'm sure everybody's going to have a lot to say about that. Uh, I know we will. Um, definitely live tweet. Um, that's a lot of fun. Um, look for you guys, and uh, thanks for everything. All right. We'll All see right, everybody man. next week. Peace. <laughs>